All right, so this is the lesson that I am dubbing um, 8.6C. So I'm going a little bit deeper when it comes to algebra, and now we're going to do two-step equations. I want to start a little different this time. I'm going to start with taking you through one of the math problems. Then we're going to write down the steps so you can understand why it is that I'm saying the words that I am. So we're going to start out with this math problem here. Okay, so this is, all, this is number one on the front of your math packet that I gave you. And I want you to show all the steps that I do. And I'm going to talk you through why I'm doing it. So the way I would read this is h plus 8 divided by 2 is equal to 25. So we've talked about finding our variable. But now we've got to notice that in my variable I have functions. I have more than one math function. I have an addition and I have division. So I have to look at the one that is truly connected to the H and the one that's not. When I look at number one, the one that's connected to the H is eight because H and eight are being added together. The one that is connected to both, so not just connected to my variable, is the dividing by two. So that's where I'm always gonna start. The one that is not directly connected to my variable is always gonna be my beginning point. So if I'm starting here with dividing by two, then, then I go back through my same steps. I'm going to do the opposite function there. The opposite of dividing by 2 is simply multiplying by 2. So I want you to do all the steps in which I'm showing you because I'm showing you how to do it, I'm showing you how to be successful, and it's what I expect to see on your assignment. Make sure you do them all. So if I'm going to multiply by 2 to get rid of my 2, I do the same thing that I did on the last lesson. I cross out those 2s, and that leaves me with the h plus 5. I'm going to do that on the opposite side then, just like I did previously. So now I'm going to have 25 times 2. What that leaves me with then is I rebuild my math problem. Everything that's left, I bring down and I make a number sentence. Make sure you write this equation. This is an important step to help you be successful. This is an important step that I will expect you to show. If you need line paper to have more room, please get line paper to show me your work. But I do expect to see all the steps that I'm showing you. Now notice what this leaves me with. Well, this is what we did in 8.4, 8.6, and the review that I just recorded of both of them together. So now I have those steps that I've already done. I locate my variable. I notice the function that's happening. The math that's happening is I'm adding eight. So I'm going to do my opposite function to get my variable alone. Instead of adding 8, I'm going to do what? Subtract 8. Hopefully went into your head. Cross those out. Then I notice my variable is alone. Once again, that's my ultimate goal. Figure out what my variable is equal to. So I'm going to drop down my h is equal to. And now I've got to do that on the opposite side. So 50 minus 8 tells me that that is 42. If you weren't sure, you stacked it, you showed me your steps on your paper, then you picked up your handy-dandy calculator, you typed in 50 minus 8 equals, and you got 42. So we're saying that H is equal to 42. Now once again, like I mentioned in the last video, if I plug 42 in here, then I would be able to do that math problem. I'd have 42 plus 8 well, 42 plus 8 is 50, right? And then 50 divided by 2 is 50 divided by 225. It is, so that's me checking my work and showing that I got that correct. Final answer, once again, one point for all your steps. H is equal to, label, two points. 42, that's another point, total of three for each of these problems. So here's our extended or our expanded process. Once again, I want you to fill it in as we go through it. This way you can constantly look back. So I'm going from three steps now to six steps. And that should make sense because we had three steps when we only had one function, right? And now I have a two-step math algebra problem. So I'm going to have six steps, two times three is six. So I'm going to begin by, once again, locating the variable. And once I locate the variable, notice why. And notice I put the asterisk here because it's not just one function. Now I have two functions that are happening. Once again, if you need to write down that the variable is A, B, C, and et cetera, feel free to do so. But functions should be plural on your paper because I have more than one function. 
And that's going to be important to be able to identify the difference between the two. When I notice what functions are happening, you need to make a note and say that's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Feel free to do so. Then I'm going to do the step two. Opposite function of any lonely mass that's near the variable. So on one, we talked about how we had adding eight to the H that was directly connected to my variable. And then everything was divided by the two. That was what we would call the lonely math function. It's not directly connected to the variable. I have to always be able to identify which step I'm going to do first. It's the one that's near the variable, but not directly connected to the variable. Once I know what it is, then I'm going to do the opposite function on the opposite side. Okay, so I'm going to do the opposite function and get rid of it, cross it out, and then I'm going to do it on the opposite side. That lets me rewrite my math problem, and then that takes me back through what we've done all along. I go to my variable. I notice what function is happening to it. I do the opposite function to get the variable alone. And then I do that on the opposite side. Feel free to pause it, look at it, and fill out your paper. I know some of you write a little slower. If I was handwriting it, it would definitely be slower. Click on my little mouse so I can do it much quicker. So now let's look at several practice problems. You'll notice on the practice problems, I have a 4A and a 4B, and they're the exact same problem. I'm going to show you two different ways to do them because some of you are going to find 4A the easier way, and some of you are going to find 4B the easier way. And I don't care which way you do it. More than one way to do a math problem, just to be able to do it correctly and show all the steps. Show all the steps. So when I look at two, a very similar setup to what I had before, right? Other than I had adding eight, but now I have the variable of k and I find it, and I see that directly connected to it is subtracting two. My one that's alone or the lonely function, not directly connected to my variable, is dividing by seven, just like practice one. So my first step has to be to get rid of dividing by seven. I do the opposite function to it. The opposite of dividing by seven is once again gonna to be to multiply by the seven. Now once again, I use the floating dot. I don't put an X because I don't wanna confuse it with being a variable. That just simply crosses those out. I don't have to do the actual math there. I just cross them out. I know that I canceled. And then I show it on the opposite side. And now I have eight times seven, and that's where I do the math. So I have to rebuild my math problem. I take everything that's left. I still have K minus two, so I have my equal sign, and then I do that math of eight times seven, and eight times seven is 56. Have to show this step. You have to be able to rebuild with what's left. That takes me then through four through six, going back to the exact same steps we've done all along. I locate my variable and I notice what math is being done to it. Well, I'm subtracting two, so I'm gonna do the opposite function to get rid of it so my variable is alone. The opposite of subtracting two is adding two, cancels it out. I check my variable alone, it is. So I know I'm gonna have K is equal to something and then I'm gonna add two on the opposite side. I do that opposite function on the opposite side. 56 plus two is 58. So I know that K is equal to 58. And if I take 58 minus two, which is 56, and I divide it by seven, do I get eight? I do. So I know that my answer is correct. On three, I have three N plus two equals 29. I locate my variable. I notice the functions that are happening. Well, I have a coefficient and a variable. I know that's multiplication because that's the definition of a coefficient, a number multiplied by a variable. And then I have this adding of two, and that's the lonely one, right? That's not directly connected to the n. So that's where I'm gonna start. The opposite function of adding two is subtracting two, cancels it out, and then do that on the opposite side, 29 minus two, well, 29 minus two is 27. So I rebuild my math problem with everything that's left. Three N comes down, 
equals comes down, and then I do that math, 29 minus 2 is 27, and that comes down. Then I'm back to steps 4, 5, and 6, same process we have been doing. I go to the variable. I do the opposite function. I'm multiplying by 3, so now I'm going to divide by 3. That gives me my variable alone, so I'm going to have n is equal to something. Now I do that on the opposite side. I'm going to take 27 divided by 3, and 3 goes into 27. And when I do the math, I get 9. So I'm saying that n is equal to 9. If I would want to plug that in and do the math, I'd have 3 times 9 plus 2. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 plus 2 is 29. 29 is equal to 29. It does check. I can prove that I'm correct. You turn the page, and this is where you're going to find 4A and 4B. So same problem. I'm going to work it both ways, and I want you to take notes on both of them because I want you to see there's two ways to do this particular type where I have a fraction and a variable. So the first thing I can do when I find my variable, I find my different math steps. The 9 to 9 is the lonely math function. It's the one not directly connected to my variable. So I have to start there. Instead of subtracting 9, I'm going to add 9. That gets rid of it. I do it on the opposite side. I'm going to take 26 plus 9, and 26 plus 9 gives me 35. So then I rebuild my math problem. So I have 1 half, b, 1 half is my coefficient, b is my variable, is equal to, and when I added those together, I got 35. So this is where you get to choose which way you want to do it. Maybe you say, okay, I'm just going to do my fractions. So I'm going to take and get rid of multiplying by one half by dividing by one half. And all I have to do is write that out. I don't have to show the steps of dividing by one half here. So I just cross them out. That gives me my B by itself. So I know that my answer is going to be B is equal to something. Now I have to go through my steps and show that I'm going to take 35 and I'm going to divide it by one half. One of the keys when I'm subtracting or when I'm dividing, they always have to go behind the answer that's already over here. A couple people on their assignments, they were putting like one half divided by 35. They were inserting it in front. Can't do that. It always has to go behind the number that's on the other side of the equal sign. So when I have 35 divided by one half, then I have to think back to, I think it was chapter two, maybe chapter three, dividing with fractions. I can't divide with fractions, I can only multiply with fractions or add and subtract. So I have to rebuild my math problem. First thing I have to do is I have to see that I can't have a whole number, so I have 35 over one divided by one half, and then I have to remember KFC, just like the chicken place, right? K stands for keep my first fraction, F stands for flip my second fraction, so one half becomes two over one. Mathematically, that's called a reciprocal. If I take a fraction and flip it, it's a reciprocal. And then the C says to change division into multiplication. Now, can I do that? Absolutely. How do I multiply fractions? I simply multiply across. 35 times two is 70. One times one is one. But any number over one is just the number itself. So we're saying B is equal to 70. If I went too fast, which I probably did, pause the video and make sure it's all written down, rewatch it, do it a couple times so you know how this process works. But I also want you to do this, the work for the same problem, which is right across from it, 4B. So I'm gonna have you look at this just a little different and see that there's more than one way I can approach this math problem. I still start the same way. I still see that my variable is b. I still see that I'm multiplying by one half and I'm subtracting by nine. The subtracting by nine is my lonely function. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to add nine. Everything's the same so far. Once I cancel that out, then I'm going to add nine. I'm going to do it on the opposite side. And then I rebuild my math problem with what's left. One half b equals 35. That should look the same as the one to the left of it for 4a. Four, four this is where I can look at it differently then, and it will work with any type of fraction that we have. It just happened to be that we have one half. I can look at it and say, well, here, this would actually be considered three math functions because I 
was subtracting by nine, I was dividing by two, and I'm multiplying by one. And I'll show you what that means. Here I can just look at the fraction and see, well, my denominator, I'm dividing by two. And if I want to get rid of that, then I would multiply by two. That would just cross out my denominator and the multiplying by two. And then when I do that on the opposite side, I would have 35 times two. And 30 times, 35 times two is 70. So keeping in mind, I didn't do anything with my numerator. So I'm gonna keep that numerator with my variable. So what I have is one B is equal to 70. Now we talked about understood coefficients and you could then just say, well, I know that's an understood coefficient, so it's just B is equal to 70. But if I don't remember that there's understood coefficients of one, then I could say, all right, so now I'm multiplying by one, and to get rid of that, I just divide by one. So when I divide by one here and cross it out, that leaves me my B is equal to something, and then I have 70 divided by one, and any number divided by one is just that number. So 70 divided by one is just 70. I get the same answer either way you approach it. Now, if that confuses you, just honestly do me a favor, rewind a little bit, and don't worry about following along. Just listen to what I'm saying and process this step because some of you are gonna find this much easier than remembering, I gotta flip my fraction and use my coefficient. I gotta do KFC. Some of you will find this easier. Not everyone will, but I always try to teach what will work for everybody as long as they do one or the other. So if you didn't quite get it, just rewind, put your pencils down, listen to me explain it again, and it should make sense because it's nothing new that we haven't done already. So we're gonna do one more together and then the assignment will be yours. So we have 14B plus eight is equal to 78. I want you to solve for your variable, pause the video, come back and check your work. All right, so hopefully you have V is equal to something and now we're gonna walk through the steps to see what V is equal to. So my lonely function that's happening is I'm adding by eight. So my opposite function of adding eight is subtracting eight. So hopefully you started there. You got rid of your subtract or your adding eight. And then you went to the other side and you subtracted eight as well. Then you rebuilt your math problem because that's one, one of the steps I expect to see on your work. And you wrote down that 14V is equal to 70 because 78 minus eight is 70. And then you said, all right, now I got to get my variable alone. I'm multiplying by 14. So the opposite of that is to divide by 14, which crosses those out, gets my variable of V, which is what I need, right? That's my ultimate goal is to get my variable alone. So then I just had 70 and I do the opposite function. Well, 70 divided by 14, maybe you don't know that. So you type it in your hand in your calculator, 70 divided by 14 equals, and you find out it's five. So we're saying that B is equal to five. Three points, right? Showed your work. Got your variable is equal to for your label and the correct number. All right, so you have a shorter assignment, but it is more math. So that's why I took some of the problems away. We don't, we're not doing 10 or 12. We're only doing six problems. Take your time. There's no race. This is due on Monday. So you have an entire weekend to get this done. But make sure you follow the steps and the steps are on the separate paper that you're now going to be able to tear off and make sure you put your name on it. But if you don't show me your steps, I'm going to count them wrong and then I'm going to make you redo it. Because I have to be able to see that you can prove to me you understand this process. But if you have any questions, come and ask because I have extra of these, but I'll be happy to work through them with you.